you know, something, something happened, and I had to share this new information that had just came to me. And I run out of my room, I run into my mom's room, and I say, Mom, I've got to tell you something. I've got to tell you something. And she's like, okay, okay, tell me, tell me. And I just said, it's going to be huge. I'm going to be so huge. It's going to be so big. And I kept going, on and on about these huge, big, great things I'm going to do in life. And she's like, okay, well, tell me, what is it? What is it exactly that you're going to do? And I took her and I just said, say and says, I have no idea. I have no idea what it is. And she was curious and thinking like those was poor kids and she was But for me, I just knew that whatever it was, it was going to be big. And I think that we all share that humanity in all of us. That we all want to do something great in this world. We want to change the world. We want to make it better. I know that when I was on America's Next Top Model, we did that in my life. I, because my definition of happiness is skewed, I thought, yeah, that's going to make me happy. That's going to make me feel good. You know, being a professional model, being doing these things, making lots of money, having notoriety, having fame, this is all going to make me feel great. And maybe that's that fourth thing that I'm going to do that's going to change the world, that's going to do something like that. And I went on with that. I made choices in my life to make sure that I got it. And I did. And uh, I, I was. Yeah. 
And so we met the opportunity to work. Lying is we have a good assumption. Um, and so she's like, here, come on, it. It is sex. You don't know that, and unfortunately, she kind of makes people not as good as anyone. I can't believe you didn't know that. Yeah, I know, I can't believe I didn't know that. I'm talking about shoes. I mean, shoes, sex, worlds apart, right? Or at least they shouldn't be worlds apart. <laughs> and I was really, really frustrated by the fact that we were clearly not having the same kind of conversation. And she's like, come on, you know, it's no big deal. And I knew that her and her boyfriend and all my other girlfriends and their boyfriends were engaging in this type of relationship. Whether they were all the way and had sex, whether they were going up to that point and then waiting them for the right moment of their beautiful three month relationship to go into that. So they were all kind of engaging in that. It wasn't no unknown at all, and that they all thought that was just something that you do. It was how you validated your relationship. It's how you really let somebody know, hey, I would really like you. I love you. I'm committed to you. More than anybody else. More than that last boyfriend or girlfriend I had before you. You are the one I really committed to. And it was that type of thing. I mean, I heard from my parents and I knew from things growing up in my Catholic faith that you should wait till you marry. My parents gave me a lot of awful, a lot of other rules that don't sit too close to the TV, things like that. And we all know that that's the focus of the holy knowledge of us, right? So you're fine. So with the rule of, hey, when you you marry something that just says, no, just don't do it because I said no? Or was there some kind of real reason behind it? Like real valid reasons that actually follow natural law and not just talking about faith. Of course they go along with faith and God's law for us. Of course they do. That makes sense. But they also clearly, by a lot of follow the natural law that we should be monogamous, that this act is true between two committed people. In a sophomore parent. And so I didn't even have those types of love like, understanding of it. I was just kind of going into it, like, you know, like I'm sure a lot of us do, right? The culture where we're at, our high school, our friends, the people, and the world, and clearly the world's like us into the whole big deal. Sex is like plastered across every single magazine you go to the grocery store. I mean, it's in our movies. I mean, we can all think, you know, the 16 to 120 minute shows that we watch that it is a given that the people who have a relationship are having sex. And they're not married or anything like that, it's no big deal. And in a matter of 120 minutes, you see this beautiful love story unfold, how they meet, how they spend a few days together, and then everything is blissful, right? And we just kind of, kind of forget that this is truly just not real. It's in everything, and it just tells us it's no big deal. And if you have a problem with it, don't worry. We'll give you some pills to take care of it. We'll give you this after. Oh, you're upset about it, or you feel bad. Don't worry about it. You just gotta lower and forget about your conscience. Don't listen to that anymore. Because this is real freedom. It's engaging in this in our relationship. That's not a big deal. And so I kind of took that for granted and took the world and took those opinions. So homecoming night comes, right? I get all the best stuff. I'm very excited for my fun dress and fun shoes and all the other things that the girls have to I go to the dance, I have a great time, like you're all supposed to. Right? We have fun, we dance with the girlfriends, dance with my boyfriend, wonderful time. And of course, after that, you know, there's all the parties that you do afterwards. You find yourself all the other parties, and this party and that party, and you know, sneak out and go to this other party. I finally found myself where there's no parental supervision, which of course is very good, very good decisions in life to move on. So, um, I found myself very, very clear. Was I going to say yes to real love? Was I going to say yes that was altruistic, that selfless? Was I going to say yes to a love that really puts the other person first? And not just puts them first in that few minutes or just that day, but like in the future. Like what's best for this person for their life? And how can I help them reach that goal? And am I really the best person for them? Am I going to accept that type of real love? Or am I going to accept the invitation love? The love that, of course, the culture tells us about, right? That it's no big deal. Sex is not lady, something that, you know, it'll help you bond, it'll be an activity that just two people do, right? It's like tennis. Just you just you, you play with another person to, you, you know, get better for your individual performance, right? And that's kind of how they, 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 they see it. It's how the world sees it, either that's how we accept it or not. And so what was I going to do? Was I accept the invitation level or was I going to accept the level? So I was 15, I had that choice to make. And for me, I made a choice. I made a choice that um, would forever change my life. I never thought at 15 that whatever choice I would make would change how I would see people, um, see relationships. As you probably gather, I chose invitation. I lost my 
I'd rather give you forever. 